Okay, so Raspberry Pi Imager has an update available and it's a big update. Now Raspberry Pi Imager is the best way of writing an operating system for a Raspberry Pi, but also other devices as well, so it's not just Raspberry Pis. You can download your own custom images and write it with that. But let's update this to show what the new look is like. I'm going to use the Discover Store to update. So there's quite a lot of updates here. And if we scroll all the way down to Raspberry Pi Imager going from 1.94 to 2.01. So let's update everything. Pop the password in. Okay, that's all finished. Everything's up to date. So let's launch Imager again. I see it's changed my icon there. So if we unpin that, we'll launch it again. Imager, pull the password in. Oh yeah, it does look different. So, pin to task manager. So now if I close that down, yeah, the icon stays there, that's fine. So it looks nice. Oh, and I see it's already on 2.0.1. So we have the option of no filtering to show everything, or we can pick a specific Raspberry Pi. So if I was to pick Raspberry Pi 5, and then you get all these options. So these are the three sort of main Raspberry Pis. So the legacy one with the older compatibility of Bookworm. And then we've got Trixie 32-bit, which would be for, I mean, not usually for Raspberry Pi 5, maybe for, uh, you know, Raspberry Pi 1 or 2, and then the 64-bit, the full one. Uh, and then we've got some others, various different Bookworm versions there. So Debian 12. Uh, the general purpose OS, so Ubuntu, Alpine Linux, Base OS, which is Android and Ambien, and media players, LibreLec, Volumio, Mood, PyCore. I like the look of it. It looks nice, nice and simple. Emulation, so only Recallbox shows up for the Pi 5. There are others available, Recallbox 9.2.3, but obviously if you want a custom image, you can go all the way down to the bottom and use a custom image like my version of RetroPie. Oh, that's different. Oh, I don't know if I like that as much. So you can type in the path or you can search for it. So mine are generally in downloads. Yeah, this isn't very long either, is it? So you don't get very many options showing up. So it will be home, KDE, and then downloads. Yeah, so these are all the operating systems. So I've got my version of KDE, uh, and also my RetroPie, which supports PS2 and Wii, because there isn't an official RetroPie for Raspberry Pi 5. In fact, does it show up for some of the other options? If we go back and pick an old Raspberry Pi, do we get RetroPie in there? No, just Recall Box. There are versions. I guess it depends what the different creators of the software make available really. Yeah, so you can see versions for the Raspberry Pi 1, 2 and up to 4. But then you can, uh, I did see that repository option. So if we go to app options here, so play sound when finished, I'm not worried about that. Eject media is good. Uh, enable anonymous statistics, I'm happy with that. And disable warnings, actually no, I won't disable the warnings because I quite often have my RetroPie stick in and I on occasion, I've overwritten that by accident, thinking it's the only storage there. So, content repository, this is new. And you can see that it defaults to the Raspberry Pi one, so that was what we were seeing there. A custom file, so I guess this is in a download location. Maybe this is more for organizations to use. So they would put the latest version in place, and they'd, they'd say use Raspberry Pi Imager to write the image. Uh, but custom URL, Say I put that in, what's it going to do? So it's got to end in .json, otherwise it won't apply. What happens if I just put in repo.json? So then it gives me the option of apply. Oh yeah, so if I do uh, no filtering, and then it would normally come up with the operating systems here, but obviously that page isn't right, but that's how it would work. So I can go back and I can put it back to the Pi default, or I could try a custom URL. So if I pick one of these, so say for instance the Raspberry Pi 401. So let's copy that and paste that in. Oh, that's the same. That also needs to end in repo.json. 
Okay, I'm going to leave it as it is. If that is something you need, there is a section on it in the comments. Content repository allows you to change the device and OS list that Raspberry Pi Imager will provide in the UI. It's covered a little more in the docs. So the Raspberry Pi Imager application is configured with a JSON file downloaded at startup. By default, Raspberry Pi Imager uses the JSON at, and it's got the uh, location of it. You can change the URL of the JSON file used by the Raspberry Pi Imager application to get it to offer your own images by one of the following methods. Okay, it's not something I would do, but the option is there, which is good. So if I pick an image to write, so let's just do Raspberry Pi OS because it's had some updates and I want to have a quick look at some of those. So Raspberry Pi 5, we'll have the 64-bit version. And then storage, so I haven't got a drive in, but I'm going to plug in my SD card because I'm running this OS from an NVMe. There you go, so it comes up straight away. So let's click on that and hit next. Oh, okay, that's good. So you can enter the host name if you want to, otherwise it will just go with whatever the default is. Customization. Oh, some people are complaining about this, that the fact that it's capital cities. Now I'm okay in the UK because London is it's the same time everywhere. But I think some people in larger countries weren't, weren't that happy about it. And that does the time zone and the keyboard layout. So we can put our username and our password in here. And you don't have to do this. And I think I did read in some of the comments that it doesn't do it for some operating systems because it, it obviously it could be different in some other operating systems. So for instance, Android, the operating systems I make are already created and already logged in with the time zone and everything. So I advise not to make any changes. But when you're writing a, a clean OS like, like Raspberry Pi OS, then it's nice to be able to have this option. Oh, secure or open network. Yeah, there's a lot more options than there were before. So you have to go through all of these options when you're writing an image now then, do you? So I'm going to leave that as it is. Enable SSH, that's remote access. So if you're using your Pi and it's connected to the internet, but you're using it from another device like a laptop or something like that. Enable Raspberry Pi Connect. Ah, look, open Raspberry Pi Connect. So you probably have to log in at this point. I think that, that should have opened up. Is it because I haven't got it on, enabled on this OS? It probably is, because I haven't used it on this yet. So maybe you have to do it on a device which already has Raspberry Pi Connect. Let's try it. So I need to sign in. There was something about it not working with KDE Plasma. I can't remember what it was now. So I'm going to skip all customization and I'm going to write a fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS. I've just seen that skip optimization. You know, I was saying you have to go through all the steps. You can just skip it and go straight to it. So let's hit write. And there's my warning. I understand. And people have also been saying that it takes longer, but there's a reason for that. And again, it's in the comments. There you go, looks better, feels better, but time for writing an image to an SD card grows terrible long. That is something which was much better in version 1.9. And it says here, the 2.0 series release includes a change to force the operating system to confirm blocks are written as we perform the write. For certain poorly performing card reader and card combinations, this could look like a performance drop, but it's a performance drop in favor of hard reliability. 2.0 leaves little to no chance in ensuring you get the OS you asked for. So how, Quick does it look for me? Yeah, it looks like it's probably going all right. I'm not using a fancy SD card or anything like that. Okay, let's just finish writing. I'm gonna skip verification and I'm gonna shut this down and restart from the SD card with the newly written OS. So I've signed into Raspberry Pi Connect on this device. And if you go to settings, it creates a key and you just copy that key and paste it in. You can see it expires in six hours. So if I go back to Imager, I've put that key in here. And let's write the image. Oh no, not that image, no. That is my NVMe drive, which KDE is on. I need to put another um, device in. God, I nearly did that then. To storage. Yeah, so 16 gig drive. Okay, so I understand. Okay, we'll come back when that's all done. I'm going to skip verification and you can see it comes up with this nice confirmation. So we'll hit finish and close this down. So I've got a 16 gig Pi 5 here. Let's pop the SD card in there and I've got another USB-C connection here. Let's just plug that into just USB-C, nothing else going into there. 
might lock that in place so it doesn't drag it all the way down the back there and switch on. So my Pi is connected with just power, nothing else. If I go to my apps, try and get less reflection uh, and then go, go back home. Yeah, Pi 55 is on there, connect via screen sharing and I can tap on it and you can see that that's definitely working. If I do help and user guide, yeah, all of that's working fine. Right, I'll switch back over to screen capture so I can show you what the OS is like now. It's had some changes. So I saw this article from 9 to 5 Linux. New Raspberry Pi OS release supports setting high DPI scaling, updates Lab WC. Oh, the scaling is in, in Control Center. Right, so we've got a Control Center, which was new recently anyway. Is under screens on there, screenshot. There we go, screens. So there's only one screen in here. Scaling. So if we do 1.5, apply. <laughs> Crikey. So you really know it's on a 4K screen um, because the icons are very small. So we don't need it on this one because this is running at 1080 through my capture device. So let's put that back. And OK. So we've got LabWC 0.9.4 as the default Wayland compositor. Updated open box window appearance to match LabWC and the a la carte menu editor. Adds icons to the Wayland task switcher. Support for theming QT6 apps and improves the font. Among other noteworthy changes, the new Raspberry Pi OS adds support for closing the volume sliders and calendar pop-ups by clicking the icon. Okay, hides the control center plug-in dialogs from the taskbar, adds the correct icons for external drives, removes pulse audio support and updates Portuguese. So external drives, if I plug something in, let's see what it comes up with. So yeah, that's a USB stick. It's actually an SD card in a USB reader, but it does look cool that it's a different drive. And what about if I plug in a two and a half inch SSD? we get a hard drive symbol. And we've got the icons on the screen here, they look cool. So the big changes were more to do with Raspberry Pi Imager. And uh, yeah, I think they've done, as usual, a great job. It is such a good tool for writing operating systems. And also, I always say this, about erasing devices. So I use it all the time for erasing different drives. So if you just format something, even if you've got a drive that's got some sort of trouble with it, you'll often find this will erase it. Yeah, it saved me countless times on drives that I couldn't get to work. Okay, so great work by everybody involved. Hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.